The Indian government recently sold 5% stake in the Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation. Through this offer for sale, they were able to raise nearly $320 million and have come closer to meeting its disinvestment target. Therefore, with the greater liquidity that the share will now enjoy in the Indian stock markets, it begs a critical analysis of its recent performance and future outlook. If any regular investor were asked what characteristics they would wish to see in their ideal stock, some of the answers would be a growing market size, monopolistic market dominance, guaranteed cash flows, low capital base requirements, sound promoters, etc. One can't think of many stocks bearing all the above features in India besides IRCTC. No doubt, it has given its investors bumper returns since its listing on the bourses in November 2019. Even two years of the pandemic, including a period of suspension of trains, and thus IRCTC could not slow down the rally that bewildered many. Also, do not forget to watch the entire video as a surprise awaits for you by the end of it. IRCTC primarily operates in four segments, internet ticketing, catering, rail need and tourism, with ticketing accounting for 54% of its top line and along with catering making up 80% of its revenue. Next up is internet ticketing. The only authority permitted to sell train tickets online. It handles more than a million bookings a day through its app and the website. IRCTC's revenue comes from the convenience fee charges, Rs 15 for a sleeper ticket and Rs 30 for an AC ticket. So cumulatively, it earns more than 200 crores every quarter through these fees. Whether the ticket is booked on IRCTC or a third-party website like Make My Trip, IRCTC gets its due. While this segment is the cash cow for IRCTC, its upside will be limited as the management aren't keen to take up these charges in the short run. However, a positive development is that IRCTC has applied to the RBI for a payment aggregation license which will significantly help it save money, transaction costs and boost profits. Next, we'll talk about catering. IRCTC offers catering both in a mobile and static fashion. It currently provides services in 391 trains along the likes of Rajdhani, Shatabdi, Duranto, Vande Bharat and vending in many others, cumulatively providing 21,000 proper meals to passengers daily across the country. A strong headwind for the company is the effort of railways to premiumize itself with moves such as introducing 400 Vande Bharat trains. However, with an option to opt out of meals recently introduced, a facility for ordering delivery to one seat as well as constant complaints of deteriorating quality of the food served, it will be interesting to see how much of IRCTC's growth is driven by this segment. Next is Rail Need. Rail Need is a business that IRCTC is quite bullish on, in spite of it presently contributing only 9% of its total revenue. From an intuitive perspective, it makes sense, doesn't it? Indian Railways transports 2.3 crore people a day, greater than the population of Australia as the popular trivia goes. And if rail need can be exclusively sold to these travellers, it can be a hefty business. And with a price tag 25% below its competitors, all seems to augur well. In fact, it has proposed opening 5 new plants in addition to its 15 existing ones. However, IRCTC will have to tread carefully given that its capacity utilization numbers have recently been abysmally low. Additionally, since many of these 23 million people are day travellers, improving penetration may be more difficult than earlier thought. With limited margins tied further to petroleum, given its plastic packaging and thus a negative ESG factor, it will only be a matter of time until IRCTC reduces its emphasis on the new segment. Now, a much less understood segment of IRCTC, tourism. Did you know that IRCTC is also the promoter of a luxury cruise ship Cordelia? Besides operating elite trains like the Maharaja Express or Pilgrim trains such as the Sri Ramayan Yatra Express for which it bags a higher premium than the usual trains, it is also the promoter of India's first private train, 
the Lucknow New Delhi Tejas Express. It has also ventured into flight and bus booking. Overall, IRCTC is foraying into multiple non-traditional areas to ultimately find where its niche might be created besides the domains of ticketing and catering. Lastly, there is a perennial debate around the fact whether IRCTC being a public sector undertaking is its boon or bane. It is run not by businessmen but by civil servants. Srimati Rajni Hasija, the current CMD of the company, is an Indian Railway Traffic Services Officer, not an IIM alumni. In fact, equity shares are not even a component of her remuneration, her compensation already being far less than any MD at a similarly sized company. While it makes anyone wonder if she has adequate skin in the game, it is important to note that her commitment along with the rest of her board seems impeccable as can be demonstrated by 100% attendance in every shareholder grievance, risk management and CSR meeting in FY2022. Mrs. Hasija is credited for pioneering the launch of the internet ticketing system which is 50% of IRCTC's bread and butter today. Investors should also note that IRCTC is not a usual but a legal monopoly that has been created by an act of parliament instead of market forces or natural reasons. This also makes the company susceptible to government intervention. Look at the case of 2016 when the service charge was abolished by the government resulting in a steep loss of revenue for the company only for the government to introduce these charges back in 2019. It's just not the monetary loss that affects the stock, but the arbitrariness surrounding it all the time. In a populist democracy like ours, ruling out interference is not prudent. Ultimately, here's what we know. Indian Railways is booming and its greater premiumization certainly means more bucks for IRCTC. It is thus destined for success. The only impediment in the way will be IRCTC itself, be it through rash decisions and incongruous investment or external interference. Only time will tell. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel as well so that the YouTube algorithm works in our favor. Thank you for watching the entire video and do not forget to hit the like button below. Also, do not forget to take your coupon code back with you.